Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Photoshop Workbench and I'm Mark Johnson. Thank you for being here. Because layer masks are made of pixels like a layer, they offer tremendous control when blending one layer with another. Layer masks accept paint, gradients, density and contrast adjustments, and filters. In today's Workbench, we'll add a distressed image to a mask in order to randomize the way the host layer interacts with the layer below. Because FilterForge is the world's best texture and pattern generating software, we'll begin by using one of the filters in its library. Then we'll explore a similar effect that can be produced using nothing but Photoshop. If you watched any of my recent workbenches, you know how excited I am about FilterForge. Uh, put simply, FilterForge is the most remarkable creative tool I've encountered in years. And in upcoming workbenches, I'll show you even more reasons why I'm so enthusiastic about this product. In the meantime, if you'd like to download a fully functional free trial of FilterForge, you can click the link associated with this workbench. When you're ready to buy, uh, be sure to enter the discount code, and I won't read this out, but you can see it in the text of this workbench. The discount code I offer here um, during checkout to receive an extraordinary 40% off your order. And I'd also like to say thanks to the unknown contributor <laughs> for submitting today's absolutely breathtaking egret image. That's a stunning photograph, but I don't know who submitted it. Anyway, let's get on with this. As I say, we're going to start uh, with a technique that requires that you're using FilterForge, but then I'm going to go into um, a method that's Photoshop only. So even if you decide not to love FilterForge the way I do, <laughs> then uh, you're still going to be able to do something pretty awesome. So um, let's begin with the FilterForge approach. Here we go. Let me dive into the internet here. Uh, this is the FilterForge homepage. Uh, you can get here, or you can get to FilterForge by clicking the link associated with my workbench. Uh, when you get to FilterForge, after you have uh, downloaded it, uh, what you're going to do is go into this Filters tab on the FilterForge website. And you'll notice here, by the way, look, you can see what filters are available just by cycling through. Some of these might be things that um, don't appeal to you. Other things <laughs> are definitely incredible. Um, there is so much possibility. <laughs> um, and you can get a quick sampling of that just by clicking this next three filters area here. But anyway, once you go into this filters tab, um, what you can do is you can go into the search field and you can enter old drawing. Now, if you watched one of my previous workbenches, we worked with old drawing uh, to actually create an old drawing look for our image and then we combine that old drawing appearance with the original photo, which was, in my opinion, absolutely stunning. We're now going to use this same filter. And keep in mind, FilterForge has over 8,000 filters. So uh, I'm going to show you more in the future. But we're going to be using this same old drawing filter to produce a um, distressed element that's going to become part of our mask. So we're not going to be running this filter on a picture. We're just creating um, a, a, an element that's going to work with our mask. So I'll click Search right here. Here's old drawing. I'll click on that. Uh, as you can see, there are variations on old drawing right here. You can see before and after. So that's the original image. Here's what that filter does to the image. And now I want to open this filter in FilterForge. I'd already downloaded FilterForge. Here is FilterForge. Okay. Um, you can see I'm on the old drawing filter right here. If, if I already had it loaded and I didn't need to go to the internet to load it into the library, then I would just go locate it um, either with a search up here if I didn't know where it was, or let's just, in fact, let's just go here and put in old drawing. And there we go. There's old photo. Here's old drawing. Old photo, by the way, that's another impressive one. But let's go to old drawing. And you'll notice there are uh, lots of presets. You can pick one that seems like it's going to be the best starting choice. Let me try this one. I'm going to double click on that. Yeah, that's a great starting point. And then you can come over here to settings and you can control so many variables relating to this. In this case, um, I will, let's see what happens. Let's adjust 
Oh, hey, something else, something else very important. If you're going to be generating um, this texture to use in your mask, then you want the texture to be roughly the same size as your picture. Uh, so begin this process before you start playing around with presets and settings. Begin this process uh, by choosing File, New Image. And plug in here the uh, pixel dimensions of your image. And in my case, I'm working for uh, on a workbench here. I've got a very low res file, 750 by 750 pixels is beautiful for that. Um, if you're working on a higher res image, you're going to be doing something more along the lines of uh, two, three, four thousand pixels by whatever. And uh, you can check that information with your picture open. You can go to image, image size, and in the image size dialog box you'll be able to see the exact pixel by pixel dimension so you could match it if you wanted to. Here I'm going to go ahead with 750 by 750, click OK, and let me scroll this back. I'm just using the uh, little wheel on my mouse right there to scroll this back. Now I'm going to play around with the settings. So I can play around with blotch size, I want that to be small. Um, I'll play around with maybe, let's see what detail does here. Detail doesn't have a big impact, does it? Or maybe I'm just not giving it enough time to, to render through there. <laughs> let's see what Lighten does. All right, let's go back with that. I think this will have, yeah, this will have a big impact. What you're thinking about here is creating something that looks like it's kind of grungy and rough uh, around the edges. That's the goal. Okay, this is looking good now. It takes some experimentation to get to exactly what you want. And you won't know what you want until you start playing. Um, and Filter Forge is a <laughs> it's the ultimate playground. I've been, um, uh, how do I put this? I've been addicted to it <laughs> ever since I got it. You'll notice also you can seamlessly tile textures. I'll, I'll do this in a f future workbench. We'll create um, a seamlessly tiled texture that will apply um, to an image as a montage. Uh, something I'll do at, an, at another time. All right, so I've got something that looks good here. I'll do save image as. I can place this uh, wherever. I'll just put it on my desktop. And you can give it a, an appropriate name. I can call it all drawing um, f distressed. Let's see, distressed mask. There we go. And you can't save it as a PSD, so I recommend saving it as a TIFF. I'll hit save. Okay. I'm in TIFF options. Uh, for the purposes of what we're doing here, 8 bit is fine. Again, if you're going to be really pushing pixels on something, go with 16 bit. Uh, never hurts to do 16-bit. It just makes a bigger file size and takes longer to render. Uh, no image compression. Perfect. I'll press OK. And that is now rendered out. Uh, this is a very quick filter, especially at 750 by 750 pixels on my fast computer. Um, not everything's going to render that fast. <laughs> All right. Now, back into Photoshop with this beautiful egret image by the unknown contributor. Uh, this is an image I'm going to montage it with a texture. Now I could create a texture in Filter Forge, but today I'm actually going to use this texture, uh, which is some handmade paper that I purchased from a, a shop in Boulder, and then I photographed it, and I just think it will work nicely with the egret, because it has that sort of natural feeling to it. All right, so what I'm going to do is Select all, edit copy, just take that out of here, come over here and do an edit paste. All right, so there's my paper layer on top of my egret layer right there. Now, um, I want to scale this because I know the paper is a little bit larger, so I'm going to just shrink things down here and I'm going to choose edit, transform, scale. All right, and then I I don't worry about maintaining uh, the exact aspect ratio. This is just a texture. That's pretty good right there. That's actually lovely. There we go. I'll press return or enter. Okay. And now I want to see how I can get this to blend with the layer below. So I'm going to cycle through these blending modes by activating the move tool and tapping shift plus. And if you watched my older workbenches, you've seen this done before. This is what I call a multi-image montage. I'm looking for the one that produces the nicest look. Screen is really nice there. I could cycle through all of them and see all of the possibilities. I like screen the best because I've already tried this. So I'm going to go with screen, but 
I feel like in this area the texture is too dense and so I gotta find a way to thin that out and that is where this distressed mask is going to come into play. But before I add the distressed mask I want to um, eliminate this brown color. So in other words I want to drive just the texture layer here, just the paper layer to grayscale but not drive the color out of this layer. So that means I'm going to go into the adjustments panel. I'll hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and click on the black and white icon right here. And I'm going to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. In other words, I'm going to clip this black and white adjustment layer into just the paper layer. So now only the paper turns black and white or grayscale and the image below still has its color. Now I'm going to cycle down through these preset choices and I've already done this and to save time I'm just going to choose high contrast blue. That's a look I really like. But again, the paper's too dense right here. So what are we going to do about that? Well what we're going to do is activate the texture layer and we're going to add a mask. So we'll come to the front loading washer and add a mask to the paper layer. Now we're going to uh, bring in our distressed mask element right here. We're going to do a select all and an edit copy. Okay, So that's now on the clipboard. We're going to go back to this document and I'm going to turn on this mask. To turn on this mask you hold down option on the Mac or alt on the PC. Option on the Mac, alt on the PC that switches on that mask and I'm going to choose edit paste so that when I paste I'm actually pasting into the mask not into a new layer but into the mask and I want to scale this so I'm going to do edit transform scale I don't care about maintaining aspect ratios here at all that's lovely I'll tap return or enter zoom that back up and deselect. I did a select deselect to get rid of the marching ants. Now if I option or alt click this again we're back to the composite image and you can see that mask, I'll switch it on and off by holding the shift key down and clicking, it's doing exactly the opposite of what I want. So what I'm going to do is with the mask active I'm going to do a command or control I and invert the mask. Now you can see here's my mask and it's creating that distressed, rough look out here. But in the middle, I'm not getting any of the texture because this area is too dark. So how do you resolve that? Well, what you do, ensure the mask is active and then choose Image Adjustments Levels. So you're applying levels to the mask. Because it's made of pixels like any old layer, you can do this. And I'll move this in and look how that starts to bring through some of the texture in the middle here. So you can see how this distressed mask and being able to run levels on the mask is making it possible for us to create a really beautiful organic blend here of layers. And I think I like that right there. Now I could also play around with this. I could play around with this. You can play around with any of these sliders and just see what happens. This is going to control the density and the contrast of that mask. When I press OK, let me show you. Here is before on the mask and here is after. And here is that texture. The way it's sort of mingling with this uh, egret layer below. Of course you can still paint on the mask. You still have that control. But with this distress mask you have this, uh, remember, on a mask, black hides a layer. White means it's visible. And gray means that the two layers are sort of um, blending together. So you really have a beautiful mix happening right here. Alright, now what if you aren't using Filter Forge to generate this uh, this mask element? Here's what you do. Now I'm going to move a little faster in the beginning here because we're going to repeat some steps. Alright, Photoshop only method. Alright, we're starting with the primary picture. We're going to import the texture. So I'm bringing this over. I'll do the select all which has already happened. An edit copy which is Command or Control C come over to this and an edit paste command or control V there it is and let me scale that down with a command or control T so I can edit transform or edit free transform it okay there we go alright so we have the texture in there we're gonna change the blending mode to screen as we did before so everything so far is the same all the initial steps are the same uh, 
Now what we're going to do is clip in a black and white adjustment layer. Okay, so hold down Option or Alt. When you click on this black and white, use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. Okay, and change this to high contrast blue or whatever works with your blending combination. Everything so far pretty much the same. Now here's where we get to um, work with a beautiful, unique Photoshop filter. We're going to create a blank new layer by clicking here. Okay, and we want to fill that layer with 50% gray. So we'll go up to Edit and choose Fill, or we'll hit Shift Delete on the Mac, Shift Backspace on the PC. Brings up the Fill dialog. We're going to fill with 50% gray and click OK. So we've got a gray layer up here. I'll show you how this is going to work in a moment. Go up to the Filter menu, slide down until you get to Render Fibers. Render Fibers. Now, you can randomize this. Let me shrink it down a little bit so you can see it. You can randomize this by clicking here. You can also control the variance and the strength. Uh, that's all something to play around with. Right now, I'm going to go with this look. I don't know if that's going to work great, but we'll see. I'll press OK, and I have this nice fiber layer right here. Now, I want to turn this fiber layer um, into a mask associated with this texture layer. So I'll activate the texture layer, add a mask, I'll take this fiber layer right here, do a select all, and an edit copy. I'm going to go ahead and deselect, select, deselect here. Turn off that fiber layer. Okay, so we've copied it. Now we're going to turn it off. It's pretty much useless at this point. Go back down to here and activate the mask, but Option or Alt click on the mask to not only uh, activate it, but to make it the actual thing you're going to paste into. It's the container you're going to paste into. Now choose Edit Paste. And you just pasted the fibers into the mask. Now I'll do a Select, Deselect. I'm going to Option or Alt click the mask and we'll go back. And you can see now, if I Shift click the mask, you can see here's with the fibers and here's without. See how we've got that distressed look in there? Well, I'm going to, f I want to, um, I want to flip this mask because I want those fibers to be. Actually, I want to rotate it uh, so that those fibers are over here. So what I'm going to do is unlink the mask from the picture. The mask is active, and I'm going to choose Edit, Transform, uh, Rotate 180 degrees. Will that do it? No, that didn't do it. <laughs> edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Hey, that didn't do it either. Not get, I'm not getting what I want. <laughs> edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. Let's see. No matter what I do, not getting quite the look I want. Let me try transform flip horizontal now. Ah, okay, well, you can see how it's flipping around in there, but I'm still not getting this to move out of the way. So, here's what we're going to do. We have a mask. It's made of pixels. We will run levels on it. All right, so we'll choose Image Adjustments Levels. By the way, this is not an adjustment layer. It's actually the levels adjustment being applied to the mask. And we'll play around with this here. I'm actually bringing in a little bit more. We'll play around with that. Play around with any of these sliders and just watch what happens. Notice the interaction of the distressed mask as it controls the uh, transparency of the uh, texture layer with the egret layer below. Now, if you wanted to, oh, you know why it's not showing up down here? It's because we're in screen blend mode. And screen, uh, when you screen this particular texture over that dark area, it just doesn't show down there. So we'd have to get it in there another way, which is a whole other workbench. But if I wanted it to be a little bit less dense in here, I could just activate the mask, select the brush tool, press D to get my default colors, X to swap them so that black is the foreground. I've got a soft edge brush. I'm making it larger with the right bracket key. Paint with maybe 20% opacity, and I tap 2 to get to that. And I could just back it out of here a little bit like that. There you go. Better. All right, so here, no distressed, distressed. And that's all created with this fiber layer, which now can be pitched in the trash. So you can see the beauty of a distressed mask and you can create those um, in Photoshop using filters such as fibers 
um, or you can create them in an application like Filter Forge using something like Old Drawing. And there are numerous possibilities. So have a wonderful time. Uh, enjoy this process. This is really taking creativity to the next level and allowing you to, uh, to just sort of shape and mold things exactly as you want them. Take care, my friends.